China's defense military says Beijing is ready to, quote, smash any foreign interference. It's also called the U.S. saboteurs in response to an American congressional delegation visit to Taipei. Beijing carried out more live fire military exercises near the island earlier today. It says the trip to Taiwan by American politicians exposes the U.S. as a spoiler of peace and stability in the Taiwan Straits. Those are the wrong pictures uh, after House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to the island. Meanwhile, Taiwan says it will not be deterred by China's response to visits by foreign political figures. This delegation's visit is very important in terms of timing and is also very significant because the aim of the Chinese military exercise is to deter other United States congressional representatives from coming to visit Taiwan. Their visit once again demonstrate that China cannot dictate nor instruct other countries' politicians not to visit Taiwan. At the same time, it also demonstrates and sends the important message that the people of the United States stands by Taiwan. Well, from all this, we can cross live to uh, Washington and speak to Arise U.S. correspondent Eric Ham. Good to see you, Eric. So a second Chinese military exercise around Taiwan in just a matter of days. Another U.S. delegation visiting uh, Taiwan shortly after Nancy Pelosi was there. Put it all in context for us. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we know now that uh, with the tensions continuing to rise between the United States and China and, of course, Taiwan being caught in the middle, what we are now seeing is that a congressional delegation is there. And this delegation consists of four House representatives and one U.S. senator. And, of course, they are there to get a sense of what is happening on the ground, to understand more about the tensions between China and Taiwan, but more importantly, to get a greater sense of the aggressive maneuverings by China's military that continue to encroach on Taiwan. And so this is an, this is an opportunity for Congress to see exactly what is happening, but more importantly, to determine what will be the steps necessary for the United States if, in fact, there is going to be some type of escalation militarily that the United States will have to get involved in. Now, to be clear, the United States is not preparing for any type of military clash with China. In fact, our sources continue to tell us at the Pentagon, as well as the White House, that that is why you continue to see these ongoing discussions between the, the, the president, President Biden, as well as President Xi, as well as their principles underneath uh, to ensure that there is no misunderstanding and also to, uh, to, to operate as a safety valve to ensure that the, 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 that conversations are ongoing and that diplomacy is the priority, not only for the Biden administration, but also for China. Now, we do know that China continues to speak in very truculent terms, particularly as the United States continues to straddle this fine line between trying to assuage concerns and fears of China, but also being an ally to Taiwan, which the United States has been for decades now. Well, I mean, I, I suppose the question has to be asked, though, Eric, um, on a sort of deeper geopolitical level, what's the significance of a second U.S. delegation visiting Taiwan in defiance of China's warning? I mean, is it all about each side testing each other out? No, in fact, I, I think what needs to happen here is we probably need to explain these uh, con congressional delegations. As, I, um, I, as a former uh, senior staffer for a U.S. senator, we used to actually call, the, they call these trips CODELs, congressional delegations, uh, where members actually go to different parts of the world. In fact, Charles, these CODELs, congressional delegation trips, these are very common. In fact, they happen all the time, particularly when Congress is in recess. Not only do we see members going to places like Taiwan, but there will also be visits to the Middle East, to places like Afghanistan, even to different parts of Africa as well. And, and so we do know that right now, the reason why this trip is actually taking place is because we are seeing a rise in tensions uh, between the United States and China. And so this is an opportunity for the legislative making body 
the body that controls the purse strings for the U.S. government to see for themselves what is actually happening. So this is actually meant to be more of a fact finding mission for these members of Congress. So when they return to Washington, they can decide where critical resources needs to go in terms of military, defense, intelligence and, 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 and diplomacy. And so that's why they are on the ground to see this. They are not there to try to antagonize or to escalate tensions, but they need to be and want to be able to see this for themselves so they can make adequate decisions based on resources. Well, thanks for that explanation, Eric. And of course, Taiwan itself, uh, buoyed by U.S. support, digging its heels in and insisting they can invite whoever they want to invite. Absolutely. And again, what we're seeing here is Taiwan sees itself as an independent nation. And while uh, we do know that there is the one China policy that the United States is always back, it's been a bit of a confusing policy because while the United States attempts to try to placate China with this one China policy, it has always treated Taiwan as a separate independent nation, which is why you see visits uh, to Taiwan by congressional leaders, as well as by um, uh, members of the administration as well. Uh, we know that President Biden has dispatched his vice president, uh, uh, the, his defense secretary, his secretary of state, and other key allies to different parts of, of Asia, because not only does the Biden administration see Asia as a priority, but also uh, as China continues to grow economically, the United States sees China as a competitor. And that is the footing that is so key to this. We have heard from our sources inside the White House, they do not view China as an enemy or as a threat. They view China as a competitor. And that's how they attempt to try to deal with this issue. Eric, thanks very much indeed. Uh, the big question is how far will all this go? Eric Ham, a rise US correspondent, talking to me from Washington. Right?